Hello all, welcome to part 3 of the Security Tube Metasploit Framework Expert course. In this video, we will look at Metapreter Basics. So, the Security Tube Metasploit Framework Expert is a course come certification provided by securitytube.net. For more details and to register, please visit securitytube.net slash SMFE. I am Vivek Ramachandran, the course instructor for the SMFE. Our certifications are currently being taken by students from over 25 plus countries around the world. And this video has been released free of charge to the community as part of Security Tube's vision to provide quality yet free infosec education for one and all. Okay, so in this lesson, we have the exact same lab as the previous videos. Now, where did we leave uh, in the last video was when we talked about how we require a payload which does not create a new process, runs in the context of the existing process, does not write to a file and a bunch of other things. And what we said was Metasploit has such a payload and it's called the Metapreter. So the Metapreter or Meta Interpreter is actually a post exploitation tool which ships with Metasploit. Now, Metapreter uses in-memory DLL injection to go ahead and reside in the memory of the process it has just exploited without having to create a new process or having to write to disk. How does in-memory DLL injection work? Have a look at the video made by Prasanna K on securitytube.net for more details. Now, one of the other important things about Metapreter is that the communication channel between my MSF console and the Metapreter payload running on the victim is entirely encrypted. At the very same time, Metapreter allows us to ship extensions on the victim machine and extend its functionality at runtime. Thus, Metapreter provides us a stable, flexible, and extensible platform for post exploitation. Now, when you work with the Metapreter, what you will notice in a bit is that it resembles a command line interpreter similar to your bash prompt uh, or your command.exe prompt, which you see on Windows. Now, there are a default set of core commands which ships with Metapreter and depending on the privilege levels you have, you could shift in more DLLs and extend the functionality at runtime. Metapreter eases a lot of complicated tasks by providing post exploitation scripts which you can run on the Metapreter as a platform. These include arbitrary command execution, in-memory process migration, reading writing to the file system registry and a ton of other things we will take up examples in the next couple of videos so how does this work so there are a couple of steps in which metapreter actually establishes the connection between the victim and the attacker machine in the first step we send the exploit and the first stage payload this first stage payload after the exploit succeed succeeds and this payload is run connects back to our msf console running on the attacker machine right then what happens is the attacker machine sends back the stage 2 which contains the dll injection payload this payload runs and then receives the metapreter dll from the attacker machine which it injects in memory and runs. Finally, this victim side Metapreter DLL 
goes ahead and communicates with the attacker machines MSF console session to provide you full access to whatever capabilities Metapreter offers. Now, the entire communication, as we mentioned, is encrypted, right? And basically, you have a client server model where the server runs on the victim and the client runs on the attacker machine. The communication happens using TLVs or type length value parameters. The interesting thing which you will note is that you can actually have multiple channels of communication as part of the same Metapreter session. And this is basically possible because what we are doing is multiplexing between the different channels by using these short TLV packets going back and forth between the client and the server. So we we'll look at a demo of channels as well a little later. Now let me do a quick demo of Metapreter, show you some basics around it and then in the next couple of videos we'll take up Metapreter and post exploitation in more detail. So let's go to our attacker machine. This is our backtrack instance and let's go to our victim machine which is Windows XP. Right here it is. Let me ensure that we are sure about the IP address which in my mind is 1.150 which is exactly the case. So what I'm going to do is search again for net API as this is the vulnerability I plan to use. So we are going to use the same net API vulnerability as in the previous video. The key change here is that the payload will now be the Metapreter rather than using the Windows shell bind TCP. So the search takes a bit. Also I have very less RAM allocated to backtrack 5, I think around 256 MB. So let's use the net API exploit. So here we go. Let me go ahead and use this. Let's look at options. I'm going to set the remote host to 1.150, which is our victim Windows XP machine. I'm going to set the payload to Windows Metapreter reverse TCP. Now, reverse TCP basically means that the victim machine connects back to us to go ahead and establish the Metapreter session with us. We'll get into more details of what reverse TCP exactly means later. But for reverse TCP, you need to mention the attacker machine IP address as this will go out as part of the payload. So here you go. Now let us hit exploit. Right. So if you notice, it says sending stage. This is the stage where it is actually sending the DLL. And now it says Metapreter session one opened between 1.10 and the victim 1.50. Fantastic. Now this leads you to a little prompt which says Metapreter. What this means is exploitation succeeded, our Metapreter payload has run and now we have a communication channel between the Metapreter payload on the victim with the attacker machine which is our machine. Now once you're inside you can do a quick question mark to look at all the different commands which Metapreter allows you to use. I'll just show you some very basic commands in this video. Take this up in more detail in later videos. So if I want to know a little bit about the system information, I can quickly do a sysinfo. This tells me things like this is Windows XP, build 2600, architecture is x86, so on and so forth, right? And the language is English US. Now to look at our process ID, I could actually do a get PID. 
which is 1032 and I can do a get UID to figure out who we are which is the system uh, the, the, the system identity for now to look at all existing processes we can do a quick PS which gives us a list of processes and a bunch of other info right now we can do a ton of things with Metapreter which I will take up in a later video in this video all I wanted you to see is how to set a payload to Metapreter get a Metapreter session and then do some basic communication with it right so that's all for this video if you like this video please leave a comment behind also, please have a look at securitytube.net slash SMFE to look at our SecurityTube Metasploit Framework Expert Certification Program. That's all. Thank you very much. Have a great day ahead. Bye-bye.